give the praise team a hand. I'm Pastor uh, Derek Morissette. This is my wife, Pastor Prophet Trish Morissette. And we actually just uh, moved to Birmingham, Alabama, where we plant a church, Mind of Christ International. Uh, so we're actually no longer in Florida. Uh, like I said, we just moved to Birmingham, Alabama. We're planting mission there, Mind of Christ International. Uh, so if you guys have in the area, stop by and visit us sometime. So, um, first of all, I just want to thank God and just honor you guys for having us here. Uh, we count our privilege and honor. We don't take this lightly. Thank you, man of God. Thank you, woman of God, for inviting us to celebrate this wonderful occasion with you guys. Um, three in one, three in one. That's awesome. Congratulations to you guys. And we just thank you guys for uh, having us here as well. Uh, just want, definitely want to honor the fivefold ministry, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, if you're in the house, we honor you as well. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and get started. First of all, if you guys would just pray with me. Father God, we just thank you for this time, oh God. We thank you for having your way. Yes. Father, we don't have to ask that you go with us, because your word says that you would never leave us nor forsake us, oh God. Yes. So we thank you for this occasion, oh God. Yes. Yes. Oh Lord, you get all the glory, Lord God, not about us, yes. but it's all about you, Father. Yes. We thank you for what you're doing in this man and woman, oh God. Continue to use them, Lord God. Continue to pour out resources yes. upon them like yes. never before, oh God. Thank you for strengthening their hands to do the work that you have called them to do, Father. So we give you praise, we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, so I promise you, we're not going to be here before you long. We know that spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. It's getting late. Uh, we got a good Cowboys game coming on at 7, so I know some of y'all ready to get out of here and get to it. All right? Okay. So we was looking at the theme of this occasion. It says, grab a hold to something. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And I was, I was looking at this, if you got to grab a hold of something, I asked the question, why? That's good. Uh -huh. Why do you need to grab a hold of something? Uh -huh. That's, good. That's, good. That's good. Why do you need to grab a hold of something? All right. mm -hmm. And it really comes from Acts 27 and 44. Grab a hold of something. Why? Obviously, something has you in a situation as to where you falling, you slipping, you going through something. You need just a little bit of hope. Come on, yes. Come on. Just a little bit of hope yes. Yes. to keep you moving forward. Yes. Yes. Just a little bit of hope. As I look around, I don't know all of you, but and I, I know a couple of you in here, but it is something that I know about each and every one of you. We've been talking about storms quite a bit up here. We've been singing, singing about storms. I don't know all of you, but here's what I know about each and every one of you. That you either just came out of a storm, or you're in a storm right now. All right. You either just came out of a storm, or you're in a storm right now. So you got to grab hold of something. That's right. That's right. You got to grab hold of something. I'm going to move along in this scripture, but I want to grab hold of something. I, I really want to just set this up and kind of do an introduction of what the book of Acts is talking about here. We know that he's talking about the great apostle Paul, where he came, he, he had shipwreck in this book. Mm -hmm. But beforehand, let's look at why all that happened. In Acts 26, I just want to paraphrase, I'm not going to read because it's like, in Acts 26, the Bible tells us that because Paul was traveling, traveling through Asia Minor, preaching and teaching, and lifting up a name of Jesus, and talking to people about the, the uh, death, burial, resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ, people began to persecute him because of his past, and because everybody was accepting Jesus. And so Paul was taken before a council, before the king and the governor, Festus, to see what they was gonna do about this situation. And it was determined by Festus that Paul was going to be in prison and taken to Rome. Amen. And that's where some of us today, some, some men and, and women and just people in general have determined Amen. where we're going to be. Amen. I say it's 
some men and women have determined on where you're going to end up. But how many of you know, although the Festus was a governor in the land and he, his word was the law, Amen. that it was the end all, say all. That's right. And him, and him telling Paul that he was going to be taken to Rome in prison really wasn't through his counsel, but it was really the counsel of God that was leading Paul to Rome because Paul had a great work to do in Rome. Amen. He had a great work to do. No matter what it looked like that man appointed him that he would be put in prison and taken to Rome, it was really part of God's perfect plan. That's right. Yes. We still talk about going through storms. Right? That's right. Y'all, y'all, y'all stick with me. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. So although Paul had to go through all these storms and all the tribulation and persecution and everything he was going through, kind of like we go through sometimes. We go through life. We go through a little, little hiccups. And, and these storms and everything, here's what I know. If we go through it, God allowed it. Yes. 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 Why? Because God is sovereign. Meaning that he can do whatever he wants to, when he wants to, and he don't need your permission. He don't need your permission. So if you're going through it, there's two reasons why. All right. Because God allowed it. Right now. But he has his hand directly in it, orchestrating himself. If I had to give you an example, I would give you the example of Job. God didn't directly do it. But because he's sovereign, he allowed it. Yes. Yes. He allowed it. If I had to give you an example of him, it's his hand the ripple in the orchestra, and I would talk to you about Joseph. All right. When he talked about he was thrown in the pit, his brothers hated him. He was lied on. Yes. Yes. Put in jail. Yes. Yes. And that's the storm. But how many of you know, when you read that story through every account, the Bible declares that, and God was with him. And God was with him. And God was with him. Through it all. All right. Through it all. Come on, sir. Thank you, Father. So as we fast forward to Acts 27, I just want to read a little bit of that. I'm not going to read it all for the sake of time because there's a lot going on here. And it says, and when it was determined that we shall sail into, verse 1, uh, chapter 27, verse 1. And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' uh, band. And entered into a ship of Adribitum, we launched, meaning this meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, one of Aristarchus and Macedonia of Thessalonica being with us. And the next day we touched at Sedan, and Judas courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go to his, to his friends to refresh himself. And we are launched from thence. We sailed into Cyprus because the winds were contrary. Okay? And we said, we had sailed over the sea of uh, Cilicia and Pomphylia, and we came to Myra, a city of Messia. And there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria, settled into Italy, and he put us there. Now, when we look at the, the Alexandria ship, we know that this is a very large ship back in those days. Back in those days, it was one of the largest ships there. It was a cargo ship that the Egyptians used to carry grain from Egypt to Rome. Yes, come on, teacher. Very large ship. Uh huh. Yeah, all right. Uh huh. And then when I was reading this, I was kind of just thinking about you, man, the woman of God, how a lot of times when we're going through, that it seems like our troubles are huge. That's right. It seems like the trials are huge. That's right. And sometimes it seems unbearable. Mm-hmm. It seems unbearable. But you know what? He got to grab a hold of something. You got to grab a hold of something. And so, as we had sailed slowly, verse 7, we had sailed slowly many days and, and scarce, we come over against Sendus, and the wind not, not suffering us, we sail on the creek over against Solomon. And hardly passing it, 
came into a place which is called the Fair Havens. Now I want to was the city of the sea of. Now much time had been spent Salem was not, and Salem was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed. Paul and Mon Paul admonished them. Now, Paul was talking about here in this, he said the fast had already passed. This was the day of Tobit that the Jews celebrated. And that calendar, it was the it was the tenth day of the seventh month. On our calendar, that could be around October. Meaning that selling and on the seas at that time really wasn't bearable. They would you know, they they say, hey, you're not supposed to be selling around this time because this is a time of the storm, this cold, a lot of the seas are being iced up. So this was during the time that Paul had all these things going on. For one, he had all these troubles and he was going to prison. Well, now he was traveling to, to Rome at the worst time of the year. Yeah. At the worst time of the year. All right. And he says to them, sirs, verse 10, he says to them, sirs, I perceive that this forge will be will be with hurt and much damage. Not only, not only of the landing, lady and the ship, but also of our lives. It says not a centurion on of the ship more than these, more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not com commodious to winter in the most part of us to the part this also, if by any means they might attain to this and there to winter, which is the haven of free, the liar towards the south and the west and the north. So this is all I just want to, for the sake of time, I want to just kind of uh, start paraphrasing over here and just kind of talk to you about how when Paul and, and the other uh, crew members and the other prisoners were traveling the seas, it came to, early he talked about a little storm he came through, but once he got on the ship, Alexandria talked about when they started selling, he came into this storm that in the Mediterranean they called, they called it the Northeastern, or the King James called it the Eurocladon. Our dictionary tells us that the Eurocladon is hurricane, typhoon type winds wow. that produce wow. 50, 100 foot waves. Wow. Wow. Eurocladon. Mm. I said earlier, I don't know all of you, but one thing I do know is you either just came out of a storm or you're entering in a storm right now. Uh -huh. It may be small or it could be a Eurocladon. Uh -huh. Man and woman of God, through your years of service, through your years of ministry, marriage, anniversary, you don't have to tell me, but I know you've had some Eurocla guns in your life. Jesus. Jesus. But grab hold of something. That's right. That's right. That's right. If you made this for you, obviously have grab hold to something and you're holding on. Yes. And you're holding on. And you continue to hold on. See, this is the one one thing about that I know, um, and even I was taught as Christians, when we receive Jesus Christ, we've been duped that we shouldn't have to go through anything. But I'm here to tell you that's how that the trials, the tribulation, the circumstances, those type storms, those are the things that God uses to build you, shape you, and mold you. Yes. To make you into that. Perfect, that, and we know that the Bible talks about perfect, they mean mature in faith to make you that mature person. That's life. We're going to endure some storms, we're going to endure some you walk with us in our life. These boisterous, these hurricanes, these typhoon type winds, we're going to endure some of them. Here's what the Apostle Peter says about it in 1 Peter 5 and 10. He says, The God of all grace, yeah. who hath called us into his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, he says, now here's the crutch word I want you to hear. He says, after. Yeah. After. Yeah. He says, after you have suffered for a while. Mm -hmm. After that you have endured for a while. That you have endured some trials for a while. Yes, yes. Amen. After you have endured some Eurocla guns in your life. Yes. After. Yes. 
He says he will make you perfect. Mm -hmm. He establish you. Mm -hmm. Strengthen you and settle you. Yeah. I love this. I, I love this verse right here. Just simply because everything, every commandment, every you go back and search scripture, every commandment, every uh, thing that Jesus talks about, every command that he gives us as a sign of obedience is followed by a blessing. Amen. Every time he commands us to do something, when you look at scripture, it's followed by a blessing. Amen. 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 In Isaiah 119, he tells us, he says, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the fruit of the land. Amen. One of my first, probably first scriptures I learned as a, as a, as a uh, late, late man or uh, late uh, Christian in church was Matthew 6 and 33. He says, seek ye first the kingdom. See, we forget that part. We forget that part and we go straight to and all these other things should be added unto you. Right. God is an if then God. If you do this, then he'll do this. Yeah, if you do, if you do this, then he'll do this. But here, 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 here's the great thing about that scripture. God says, seek ye first the kingdom and all his righteousness and all these other things should be added unto you. So, so, so look at that. God says, if you do this first, then I'll do this for you first. So this is not a, a, a secondary tertiary thing. He says, hey, if you do this, seek me first. He said, take care of my need first, and then I'll take care of your need first. So obedience is the key yes. to blessings. Yes. That's right. oh, yes. Obedience is the key to blessings. Wow. Grab hold of something. Yes. Grab hold of something. Grab hold to something. Mm -hmm. Peter says that he will perfect you, he will establish you, mm -hmm. he will strengthen you, then he will settle you. Simply meaning that he will build you up, mm -hmm. he will make you mature, yes. yeah. he will establish you so you won't waver. Amen. The next time that storm comes through, you won't waver, you won't be wavering. That's right. He will strengthen you in your spirit, man. So when the next time that storm comes up, be strong enough to withstand. Yes. He will sell you, meaning that he will give you a firm foundation. Yes. When that storm comes, when, when, like in the gospel, when you talk about the house that was built on good ground, yes. wasn't, wasn't built on no shady ground. So when the storms and the waters and the winds blew against it, it didn't fall. It won't fall because it was built on a firm foundation. Yeah, yeah that's what he said. He said he'll sell you. So if you're going through it, grab hold of something. Just hold on. Help us on the way. Hold on. Help us on the way. That's all you gotta do. Let's hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's for somebody. Let's hold on. You in the song right now? Hold on. If you just came out of the storm, tell somebody else how to hold on. Show somebody else how to hold on. Show somebody else how to hold on. But this is what I believe. I believe that as most of the things we go through are not for us. That's right. Man. That's right. They're not for us. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the, the next generation and the next generation, when you search scripture, when Jesus blessed, it was for generations. When he blessed Abraham, he said, I'm going to bless you so you will, you will be a blessing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make your name great. He said, all the members of the other earth are going to be blessed through you. How many of you know you're the seed of Abraham? Yes. So you are blessed to be a blessing. Yes. If you're obedient, you don't even have to look for the blessings. It's an automatic principle. 
And God's principle, his precept, his concept, they never fail. Uh -huh. That's why you can take a, 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 the, the crookedest person in the world. If they apply God's principle, that's why we ask the questions of, they don't even, they not, they don't even go to church. They don't know nothing about Jesus. But you know what? If they apply principle, yes. principles never fail. Cliches fail all day long. They change all day. The principles never fail. Yes. That's right. That's right. Jesus tells parables about how when the words come forth and some fell on good ground, some fell on stony ground, some fell on bad ground, and some had to get it here. Some of them got the word, but it was plucked away from them. That's what the enemy does. Plucks away that word that we didn't hold on to, takes it to the kingdom of darkness. Then you got people who, in these high places, gazillionaires, what we call successful, and we say they made it because they have principles that was meant for us, words that were meant for us, that we didn't hold on to because of a circumstance, a situation, a little trial, and we let it go. But if you hold on, if you're obedient, yes. blessings have no choice but to fall. That's right. That's the word of God. God's, he, he, if he makes a promise, it shall come to pass. He is not a, he's not a man that he should lie. Son of man, he should change his mind. When he speaks, he acts. That's right. When he makes a promise, won't he do it? Yes. Won't he do it? Yes. So every promise that God has made unto you, you got to hold on to it. You got to fight for that word. You got When you get a word, you got to fight for it. You got to fight to hold on to it. You got to begin to wear that word. You got to begin to cultivate that word. You got to begin to cultivate. Amen. You got to begin to cultivate that word to see that it comes to pass. Because the word of God, God, God. See, we wait. We said we waiting on God, but how many know God? You're not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to be Ephesians 1 and 3 and tell us that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. That's past tense. Yes. That ain't future tense. That's past tense. Yes. Now the future tense is when you meet up with the word. Because yes. God is not a God of dysfunction, meaning that he's never going to lower the standards. That's right. We got to meet up with the promise. That's when you become that mature, that perfect person that he talks about. When you're mature enough to meet up with the promise, and you're this changed man that he talks about. And you will be able to handle it. Yes, yes. Handle that promise. I say this all the time. I, I uh, used to minister at, uh, my first uh, ministry, I used to minister at a rescue mission, did it for about a year, and I said, uh, one of the things I would say all the time is, I said, you know what, I said, many people wish for a million dollars, but if God gave it to you, many of us couldn't handle a million dollars. A lot of times we ask for things that we, we're not ready for. That's right. I believe the one thing we should be asking for is wisdom. Okay. Wisdom. This book I read, it tells me that wisdom is more precious than rubies, more precious than gold. Uh -huh. So if you get wisdom, wisdom gives you the ability or gives you the know-how on how to multiply that million dollars. That's what wisdom does. So, again, hold on. If you're going through the storms, hold on. If you've been through the storms, continue to hold on. Because a blessing is around the corner. 